Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton. So we're back with a brand new video and I'm going to get you guys started on Express.js. So what exactly is Express? Well, Express is a web framework that allows you to build powerful APIs. And if you guys don't know what APIs are, feel free to check out my previous video that I uploaded. It talks all about APIs and what they are. Now, many people love using Express because it's minimal. It's super flexible it as a rich ecosystem. So there are many packages that support Express and it's very easy to learn, especially if you're new to JavaScript in general. In a nutshell, Express makes it very easy for developers to build the backend of any application. Now, if you don't know what backend development is go ahead and check out my video it's called full stack engineering roadmap it'll explain the differences between front and back end development all right so let's talk about what a web framework is or what a framework in general is because obviously we know express is a web framework but we don't know what a web framework is and i don't want you guys to just use these technologies without knowing what they are so frameworks in general provide tools that allow us to implement features in our application without needing to worry so much about the abstractions because quite often we find ourselves writing the same code over and over again so we can think hey can't we just write all this code in one file and then we can invoke that code whenever we need to okay and that code is probably only going to be ever written once and we probably only needed to be invoked once anyways so it makes sense to put all of these functionalities together into what's called a framework and they take care of all the heavy lifting so developers can just focus on the logic of the application without having to worry about the extra preliminary configurations that need to run their app all right, so the prerequisites of this course are very, very simple. You just need to obviously have a computer. You need to have the basics of JavaScript. I mean, I'm assuming that you guys, or most of you at least, have an understanding of JavaScript. If you don't know programming in general or don't know JavaScript, feel free to check out my Intro to JavaScript series on my channel. I'll put a link in the description. You need to make sure you understand callback functions. I do have a video on callback functions, which the link will be in the description as well. And you also need to understand APIs and HTTP protocol at a basic level. I have a video, like I said, the previous video that I did on APIs explain these at a simple level. And of course, you need to make sure you have Node.js installed. So go ahead to nodejs.org, click on downloads and just download the latest version on whatever operating system you're on. Okay, it's very, very easy download. So just go ahead and download it and run the installation file and it should be just fine. And then obviously have a text editor. So I use Visual Studio Code, but you can use whatever you want. So to download Visual Studio Code, you can just go to code.visualstudio.com and just click on download for whatever operating system you're on. So assuming that you guys have these tools installed, let's go ahead and continue. So some of the key concepts that we need to understand throughout this whole course. Now remember, these are key concepts that are not tied to any specific framework. So it doesn't just apply to Express, it applies to any web framework in general or the field of web development. So request methods, route handling, route parameters, query parameters, and headers. All right, so we're going to get started. So I'm going to exit the slides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open my terminal. So I should also mention that you guys should be using a terminal. Visual Studio Code has a built-in terminal that you guys could use. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder. So I'm going to call this mcdir. So mcdir is a command. That's part of the uh, command line. It stands for make directory. So I'm just making a folder. You could just go into your documents folder or your desktop or wherever and just right click and click on create new folder. I'm just doing it from the terminal express tutorial so i'm going to cd which stands for change directory so i want my command line to be inside the express tutorial folder because this is where we're going to execute our code okay and now i'm just going to open up visual studio code with the code command which if you don't have visual studio code installed this command will not work so make sure you have visual studio code installed but you can just manually open up visual studio code and click on file open folder and just select the folder that you just created okay so we're going to go ahead and create a new file called app.js but before we actually do this i should also mention we need to actually install express can't believe i forgot that so we're going to go ahead and run npm so if you've installed node.js correctly and if your path is set up correctly then you shouldn't get any issues with node or npm command you can just verify node is installed correctly by typing node hyphen v if you get an error that says node command is not found then that means that your path is properly set up incorrectly so make sure you check your environment variables and make sure that it's pointing to the correct node binary so i'm going to just type npm init and remember npm is installed with node.js and i'm going to pass in the hyphen y flag so this is going to generate a package.json file for us and this is kind of like a manifest file that describes the metadata of our project you don't have to worry so much about this package.json file we need this package.json file so we can have our dependencies listed whenever we install them with npm so to install express.js you need to use the npm command you're going to type i or install and then express so it's npm, the command install, and then the name of the package, so express. 
And you can see that we just installed Express version 4.17.1 and it created this node modules folder as well as the package lock.json file. And you can see that we have a bunch of different sub dependencies that Express depends on. Okay, but you don't have to worry so much about that right now. So now that we have Express installed, we can go ahead and import Express into our app.js file. So we're going to go ahead and use the const keyword and we're going to, by convention, name the variable Express and we're going to require Express. Okay, so we just required the entire Express module into this one variable. So now I can go ahead and declare another variable called app. And this express variable is actually a function value, which means we can invoke it with parentheses. And this is going to create the application for us. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to start listening to requests. And the way we do this is we need to bind our web server to a port. Now ports are just communication endpoints and they are numeric values. So you can have any value between zero up to 6,500, 536. And you can use any port within that range. However, you should consider certain values since there may be other problems that are using that port okay but for this video we're going to use port 3000 so i'm going to go ahead and say app.listen 3000 and you can see that my intellisense is expecting a callback function it's optional but i am going to pass in a callback function so i'm going to pass in an error function and i'm just going to go ahead and say console log server is running on port 3000 and that's pretty much it so now we can go ahead and run our application and you're going to notice that we actually can't do anything else. Like you can see that this cursor is blinking and we can't do anything else. That means that our application is blocking our entire shell, which means that it's actually running and it's ready to handle requests. So you can see server is running on port 3000. Now, how do we actually interact with our application? Sure, it's running right now, but how do we actually access it? Well, we need to access it by typing in localhost port 3000 in our browser. So for example, right over here, this is my web browser. You're going to type in localhost port 3000. So localhost colon 3000. And you can see that it says cannot get. The reason why it says cannot get is because we have not handled any endpoints. We have not handled any routes yet. So let's handle a simple route real quick. So app.get slash rec res. And I'm going to explain what this is in just a sec. And what we'll do is we'll just send back a 200 response, which is a successful response. So like I said, you can just go into your browser or you can install an HTTP client that can make requests or you can use something like invoke rest method or curl. So if I refresh, well, we actually need to restart our application. So let's do that because we just made a change. Now you can see this is okay. So what exactly is going on over here? So app.get, what this is doing is this is registering a route method. So we're making a get request. Okay, remember when you're making a get request, you are retrieving resources. And the endpoint or the route that we want to request resources at is slash. Okay, so every single request that maps to this route over here, the main route is what I like to call it, is going to be handled by this callback function over here. So this callback function is going to be invoked and it has two parameters. It has the request object and the response object. And we'll go over more about the request and the response object in the next video. But all you need to know now is that the response object has a method called send. And you can use to send a body back to the client. So you can send either a string, so I can send hello world. And I'm gonna go ahead and rerun the app refresh and notice how it says hello world. If I want to make this request from, let's say my PowerShell, I can say invoke rest method, get localhost port 3000. Actually, let me uh, get rid of this get real quick. I think it needs to be HTTP. Okay, there we go. So invoke rest method, HTTP localhost port 3000, and it returns hello world. We can also have this return JSON. So let's go ahead and return a message. Let's just say, hello. Let me go ahead and restart over here. So on my browser, I can refresh and it says message hello. And right over here, we're gonna invoke rest method. And notice how over here, it says message hello. Let's send another property with this object. So let's just say user. So we can send like, you know, user account, for example or a user object, and we can do whatever we want with this function. And it sends an empty user object. And let's invoke it here. And there you go. So that's pretty much a basic web application that we just built. Obviously it doesn't do much, but in order for us to do more with our web server, we need to learn more about routing, route methods, headers, query parameters, which are 
all things that we're going to go over in the next couple of videos. So hopefully all of this made sense. If you guys have any questions, feel free to join my Discord server. I'll leave a link in the description and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.